Hey everyone, I am T-Rex and today I am ranking all the movies I saw in March. Now I didn't watch as many movies as I wanted to watch this month, I definitely watched more movies in February, and I did a ranking of all the movies I watched then if you want to go check that out, but anyway with that out of the way, let's get into my ranking of the movies I watched in March. Okay, coming in dead last in number, it's gonna be <coughs> Godzilla King of the Monsters. Now if you want more of my Godzilla auditions, please stay around and ask for those, but anyways, let's get into my actual feelings on this movie. If you want a more in-depth review, I did a review on most of these videos, so you can check that out, and I did one on this one, you can check that one up above or in the description, they'll both be there. But if you just want the spark notes of my feelings on this movie, I don't think it's that good. This movie is about the monsters, and they're good when they're there, but the rest of the movie when the monsters aren't on screen is pretty bad. These characters are just terrible, and even though we have monsters action in it, this movie still feels feels oddly long, and that's because of instead spreading out the monster action throughout the entire film, they just decide to cram it all in the back, so it's like, oh, there's nothing happening, it's just characters in the beginning, and at the very end, it's like, Wah! monsters, so many monsters, boom, ba, um, to sum up everything, this movie was not my jam, it was boring and had some decent fights, but that was like maybe 10 minutes of the movie, so don't watch this movie and just watch the fight clips on YouTube. Number 7. And number 7 is going to go to The Incredible Hulk. When I rank the Marvel movies, I put this movie in the good tier. And on my all-time life regrets, I put that around spot 142. I think I keep it in the same spot in the list, but I definitely drop it down to the okay tier. This movie's got good pacing and bearable characters, and the action's actually pretty good, even if the CGI looks kind of dated. But in this movie, nothing stands out as it's pretty forgettable. I'll put it this way. This movie is like the salting cracker of the MCU, where it's just like, you eat it, and you're just like, that happened, and I'm okay with it. But let's think of it this way. If I was at a party and someone said, guys, let's turn on the Incredible Hulk, I'd be fine with it. But at the same time, I don't think this movie's anyone's first pick when wanting to watch an MCU movie. This movie's not amazing. It's not bad. It's pretty okay. Number six is going to go to... Godzilla. Now, this might seem low since people love this movie, but if you go watch my review I did, I did not love this movie. Now, don't get me wrong, I have warmed up a bit to it, but this movie is just a bit too slow for my taste. I get they're obviously trying to build up to this great finale, and they're kind of trying to hide Godzilla and kind of make him feel like the shark in Jaws, where he really only shows up to the end of the movie, but let's stay on that topic and that analogy. Think about the characters in Jaws. They are all memorable. You have the police chief who hates the water, Richard Dreyfuss as that lovable oceanographer, and the sea captain, and they're just these great characters. In Godzilla, we're stuck with this guy. You see the issue? I'm fine with this darker tone, and the third act is amazing with these incredible shots. I just think if they want to make Godzilla a force of nature, please give us better characters and a bit more action. When this movie might be a movie I really need to go back and revisit, and my opinion might change in the future. Now number 5 is gonna go to <laughs> Kong Skull Island. Now this movie is a jam. This movie is so much fun. It does not take itself seriously, which is good since it's a humongous monkey attacking Vietnam soldiers. This movie knows exactly what it is, and that's why it's so fun to watch. I don't always want to watch an Oscar-worthy drama. Sometimes I just want to watch a giant monkey start attacking people for no reason, and it's barely two hours. This movie is so much fun, and that's why it's above the movies of below this one. But it's also kind of why it's at the number five spot, because it does not have these great characters. It's not that great of a story. It's just getting these basic characters landing on an island and fighting a giant monkey. Not a great movie, but a really fun time. Number 4. Now, number 4 is gonna go to Remember the Titans. I have never seen this movie until I watched it last month, and I was on Disney Plus and decided to watch it, and honestly, it was really good. I think the characters here are really the heart of the film, and really what makes it so good. It's got a decent story, but at the end of the day, like most sports movies, it doesn't end up mattering about the sports or the narrative. It's about these characters, and luckily here, they are really, really good. I will say, though, that this movie does get boring at times, but when the movie is at its best, it is awesome. But the pacing isn't always the best here. It hits some really high notes, and the emotional moments are just so good, but it just is not able to always be so consistent throughout the entire runtime, and that's what leads this movie to the number four spot. Number three is gonna go to <laughs> King Kong. This long remake of the original King Kong, I generally really liked. These characters are actually great, with epic Kong action along with it. If you want to watch a King Kong movie, but actually want to have a good movie as well, I definitely recommend this, but for the average moviegoer, this bad boy is long. Three hours is a long runtime, and this movie, I think, overstays its welcome a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong, I think it's good the entire time. 
Heck, I'd say it's even great, but not everything here needs to be in here. There are a lot of great scenes here, but some of them don't really develop the characters or the plot that much. This story and characters are great. The story is rich, it's so good, but the film is just a bit too long for the average moviegoer. I really enjoyed watching this movie, but I don't even know how soon it will be until I get to watch it again just because of that runtime. It's great, just know you're in for a long movie. Number two is gonna go to Pacific Rim. Big robots versus big monsters. You sold yet? This movie is the fun factor of Kong Skull Island, but at the same time actually having some really great concepts and building this really rad world out. The characters in this movie are subpar, but it's a monster movie. What's new? The mechs vs. monster action is great though in this awesome world with these really fresh concepts that just make this film feel really unique. I personally just really enjoyed this movie i don't know what more to say i think it's one of the most unique monster movies and i just love the humongous mech and monster fries that really just helps it elevate to the number two spot but it can't top my list let's head to number one number one is gonna go to if you couldn't tell i was just doing sign language to do apes together strong because number one is gonna go to war for the planet of the apes when i started watching this trilogy i wasn't really all in as i wasn't that big on rise of the planet of the apes so i wasn't expecting that much from the sequels but the second movie was good but i think war of the planet of the apes is really where it discovered its full potential you take your relatively weird narrative yet it works here very well i'd say we get an incredible emotional journey from Caesar and the original apes from the first one. These performances are so good with an amazing ending and emotional gut punch at that ending. I went in with very low expectations of this movie and came out with a movie that was something that was honestly very special. If you haven't seen these movies, take the time, watch it, and give it a chance. You might not love all of them and that's okay, like I don't love the first one, but these characters are so amazing and so emotionally rich. Don't get turned off due to the monkeys with guns on horses, because honestly these movies are just so much more. And those are my rankings of all the movies I saw in March. What movies did you see in March and how would you rank them? I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Remember, I will be reviewing Hellboy tomorrow in my little mini-series of me reviewing Guillermo del Toro films. Anyways, when that comes out, I'll see you then. Bye.